Hannah, the 12-year-old daughter of linguist Louise Banks, passes away from a terminal illness. A dozen alien spaceships are in a state of hover over different parts of the planet. Affected governments dispatch military and scientific specialists to observe and analyze them during the ensuing worldwide hysteria. Banks and physicist Ian Donnelly are brought in by U.S. Army Colonel Weber to investigate the craft above Montana. Two seven-limbed aliens that resemble cephalopods are encountered by Banks and Donnelly on board. They refer to them as heptopods and give them the nicknames Abbott and Costello by Donnelly. Researching the aliens' intricate written language, which consists of palindromic words inscribed with circular symbols, Banks and Donnelly share their findings with other countries. Banks begins to see visions of her daughter that resemble flashbacks as she studies the language. They respond with a message that might be interpreted as offer weapon. When Banks is able to build enough common vocabulary to inquire as to why the aliens have arrived. China takes this to mean use weapon, cutting off contact, and other countries soon follow. According to Banks, the sign that is seen as a weapon can actually be more abstractly linked to the ideas of means or tool. China's interpretation of the symbol is probably the result of playing the intensely competitive game of mahjong with the aliens. A bomb is planted in the Montana craft by renegade soldiers. When Banks and Donnelly return to the extraterrestrial spacecraft without realizing it, the aliens deliver them a more nuanced message. One of the aliens ejects Donnelly and Banks from the ship, rendering them unconscious just before the bomb explodes. When they awaken, the U.S. military is getting ready to evacuate in case of reprisal, and the alien craft has moved beyond their line of sight. General Shang of China gives his local alien vessel a 24-hour ultimatum, requiring it to depart China. Russia, Pakistan, and Sudan do likewise. As global panic descends, contacts between the multinational study teams are cut off. Donnelly finds that the writing takes up precisely one-twelfth of the 3D space it is projected into, and that the sign for time appears throughout the message. According to Banks, the aliens want all the nations to share what they discover, and the entire message is divided among the 12 craft. Banks visits the Montana craft by himself, and it descends a transport pod. Abbott's injuries from the explosion are fatal. According to Costello, they have come to aid humanity because, in 3,000 years, they will require assistance from humans. Banks understands that their language is the weapon. Acquiring the language modifies people's linear understanding of time, enabling them to recall future occurrences. It is revealed that Banks's visions of her daughter are premonitions, and that her birth is postponed. As the camp is being evacuated, Banks reappears and informs Donnelly that the alien language is the tool that was intended when the word weapon was used. She foresees a United Nations celebration of the newfound togetherness after the extraterrestrial visit, where General Shang of China praises her for calling his personal number and reciting his wife's final words to convince him to halt the attack. Next, he gives her his personal number and whispers in her ear what his wife said. In the present, Banks phones Shang's private number to repeat the remarks after grabbing CIA agent Halpern's satellite phone from a table. The Chinese declare that they will now take a bow and reveal their 12th message. The 12 spacecraft take off as the other nations do the same. Drawing from her newfound knowledge, she writes and publishes the universal language, a book that serves as a guide for the heptopod language and eventually teaches humans to view time in the same way as heptopods. While in the evacuation, Donnelly tells Banks how much he loves her. They discuss life decisions and if he could see his life from start to finish, what changes he would do. Banks is aware that even though she knows their outcome, that Hannah will pass away from an incurable illness and that Donnelly will abandon them both. She will nevertheless consent to have a child with him.